Hey everyone, this is going to be the first video in our Number Sense series, and while this is the first video in the series, we also have a lot of slides on Number Sense, so if you're interested in that, that'll be in the description below. But let's get started on the actual video. So again, this is going to be on base conversion, and to understand base conversion, the first thing we actually need to understand is a base, right? What is a base? when we're talking about numbers and number systems. So you might have an idea of this, whether you've seen it in your comp sci class or something like that, but if you don't, that's totally okay too. Um, and actually the best way to understand bases is to look at a base that you're probably familiar with, but you might not have heard it called this, but that would be base 10. So, all numbers you probably work with in like your math class, for example, are generally going to be written in base 10. So if you've never heard of bases, then probably the numbers you've been working with are in base 10. So let's just look at a number in base 10, any number really. I'm just going to say the number 156. So this is a number written in base 10 and well, well, what do we know about this number? Well, we know this is the ones place. This is the tens place. And the one is in the hundreds place, right? And let's say I added another digit here. This would be the thousands place, right? So this is pretty straightforward, right? Um, it's just basic place value. But what you might or might not notice, is that every um, place value, ones, tens, hundreds, and thousands, are powers of 10. So one is 10 to the power of zero. Anything, anything to the zeroth power is one. 10 is just 10 to the first power. 100 is 10 squared. And 1,000 is 10 cubed. So this pattern is where the name base 10 comes from. This is why this is base 10, because all the place values are powers of 10, right? So this is what we mean when we say base 10. And another important thing about base 10 is that it uses the digits 0 to 9. It's probably not something you think about when you're writing numbers, but... Um, you know, as we know, any digit that we write in every place value spot is going to be between 0 to 9. Those are the digits we use and work with every day, right? So that's basically an overview of base 10. But whether or not you've heard of other bases before, there are multiple ways of representing numbers. So base 10, while it is the most commonly used in like math classes and just like in your daily life, there are many other bases that we can express numbers in. Base 10 is just what we have chosen, but there are other ways to represent numbers. So for example, there's base two, which is really commonly used in computer science. Um, but that's not the only base, right? You can have like any base, basically. You could have base three, four, five, whatever, right? You can have pretty much any base, all right? So when we say this, then what does it mean to represent a number in base two or base seven, right? What exactly does that mean, right? So let's talk about that. Let's delete what we have here. And let's, let's look at, for example, base five. This is just an arbitrary base I've chosen. Um, no reason behind it, right? But let's just look at base five. All right, so keeping in mind what we know about base 10 and how every digit in base 10 is it's representing a power of 10, right? 10 to the zero, 10 to the first, right? So keeping that in mind, what do you think it would mean to write a number in base five, right? Think about that. Maybe take a minute, uh, think about what digits base five might use. So if you want, you can pause the video and just think about that. 
otherwise I'll just go over it right now. So, I'm trusting that you guys pause the video if you wanted to. And now, let's take a closer look at base 5. So, let's look at a number in base 5. Let's say we look at the number 13. Alright, so, in base 10, let's just take a step back and think about base 10 again, right? 13, the 3 is in the 10 to the 0th place, or the 1's place. The 1 is in the 10th place, which is 10 to the 1st, right? But now, we're no longer dealing with base 10. We're dealing with base 5, right? So, for base 5, instead of this being the 10 to the 0th place, it would actually be the 5 to the 0th place. And instead of the 10th place, we have the 5 to the to the first place, right? So thinking about this then, we have a three in the five to the zeroth place. So what does that equal? Well, when we have a three in the 10 to the zeroth place, that's a three in the ones place. So three times one is three. And you'll notice that 5 to the 0 is also 1, because anything to the 0th power is 1. So really, in this case, in this 5 to the 0th place, we're going to have the same value, because it's 1 times 3, regardless of the base. So it's going to be 3. But now let's take a look at the 1, right? In the tens, in base 10, right, this 1 we know represents 10. But we are not in base 10 anymore. We're thinking in base 5. So instead of being 10, we do 1 for the digit in the place times what this place value is, 5 to the first. And if you do that, you'll get 5, right? So that's really what the 1 is representing, and that's what, and then 3 is what the 3 is representing. So then the total value of the number will be 5 plus 3, which is 8. So in base 5, the number 13 doesn't represent what you would think of as 13. It actually, the value is 8. So let's go through another example, and I think it'll become a little bit more clear. So let's focus on the number 243 and what its value is in base 5. So, um, by the way, when we write something in a base other than 10, we have to indicate that in some way. And so mathematicians, they don't write like base 5 every time. Instead, we just use um, a superscript at the bottom. So 243 base 5 is written like that. Um, it's kind of like a power, except instead of writing it at the top, you write it at the bottom. And so that's how we notate a base. But um, aside from that, right, let's go back to looking at the number and what it means when we say 243 base 5. So again, let's look at the place value for each digit. This is the 5 to the 0th place, right? 5 to the 1st, 5 to the 2nd, just like the previous example, right? And so each number in the 2, the 4, and the 3, they are representing 5 squared, 5 to the 1st, and 5 to the 0. So again, let's take a look at this value then, right? So we know 5 to the 0, that's 1. 5 to the 1st is just 5. And 5 squared is 25, right? So if it's easier for you, you can think of it as the 1's place, the 5's place, in the 25's place, which sounds kind of weird, but remember, it's just like 1, 10, and 100, but now we have 1, 5, 
and 25 because this is base 5. So let's look at this then. What's the value? So 3 is in the 5's place. I mean, sorry. 3 is in the 1's place. 3 times 1 is 3. 4 is in the 5's place. 4 times 5 is 20. And 2 is in the 25's place. So 2 times 25 is 50. So then the total value of this number becomes 50 plus 20 plus 3. And what that equals is 73. Alright, so another thing to realize is that in base 5, we only can use the digits 0 to 4. And if you think about why this is, it'll make more sense. Like, for example, let's take the number 40 in base 5, right? That's a completely valid number in base 5. And if we want to, we can figure out what it's equal to, right? The 0 is in the 5 to the 0th place. 4 is in the 5 to the 1st place. So the total value is going to be 20. And that makes sense, right? But let's say, for example, we open up digits greater than 4 to base 5. 5, right? So let's say I can use a 5 in base 5. Then if I write the number 35, well, this is also going to be equal to, to 20, right? This would be another way of writing the number 20 because 5 times 3 is 15 plus 5 times 1 is 15 plus 5, which is 20, right? And so you can see in this example that when we open up base 5 to digits greater than 4, it becomes ambiguous about how we should write numbers. Like, should we write 35 or 40? And we don't want that. We want there to be only one way to represent a number in base 5. Like in base 10, for example, we, we don't have multiple ways to write the number 20. It's just 2, 0, and that's the only way we write it. So let's take a step back from base 5 because we've been focusing a lot on it. And let's think about some other bases. So I'm going to move this out of the way over here. All right. And let's just think about a base in general, right? If we think about a base in general. Let's just call it, let's call it a base, let's call it base B. All right. So B, just any number, it could be 10, 5, whatever, right? And from the two examples we've already done, base 10 and base 5, you've probably seen a pattern. All right. Um, and we can look at that pattern, right? So for base 10, right, it uses digits 0 to 9. Base 10, 0 to 9, and it uses powers of 10. Now, base 5 we looked at uses digits 0 to 4, and the place values are powers of 5. So just from these two examples, you might recognize a pattern, right? We can kind of generalize what we've learned from these two bases to think about, like I said, the generic base, base B. So for base B, let's think about it then. It would use the digits 0 to B minus 1 because let's look back at base 10, right? 0 to 9, base 5 is 0 to 4, and 5 minus 1 is 4, 10 minus 1 is 9. So for any base, base B, we use the digits 0 to 1 less than B. We can't use B itself in the base, but we can use 
any number less than b. And then, so, and then the other part of it is that we use powers of b in the place value. That's what the place value represents, right? So that's kind of the general case. So you may be asking then, what if we have a base greater than 10? Let's say we have a base, let's say we have base, let's say we have base 16, which is a like pretty common base actually in computer science called hexadecimal. And you might be wondering then, well, based on what we've established here, it's going to use digits 0 to b minus 1, which is 0 to 15. And you might be wondering, how does that work? Because we don't have a digit, we don't have symbols for like digits past 9, right? We don't have a digit for 10, 11, 12, etc., right? We don't have that. Instead, we are using two digits here, right? So in a base greater than 10, what are we using for these other digits, right? You might be wondering that. And well, we're not going to focus too much on bases greater than 10, since you're probably not going to encounter that too frequently on number sense. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a question for a base greater than 10. But if you are curious, um, when a base is greater than 10, we use other symbols. So for example, base 16 uses the digits 0 to 9, and then a to h in the alphabet. So a equals 10, b equals 11, c equals 12, etc. Right? So in this way, we're able to represent bases, um, bases over 10. But Again, don't focus too much on bases over 10. Just the main thing is that for any given base, base B, the digits used are from 0 to B minus 1. And every place or every place value in the, di in the number are powers of B. So like the first digit is B to the 0, second digit is B to the 1, etc. Right? B to the second, B to the third, B to the fourth. And so that's pretty much what a base is and what it means to represent a number in a base that is not 10 or even in 10, right? But in 10, we usually don't go through this thought process, right? In base 10, you know it's the ones place, tens place, and hundreds place. So other bases, they might not be as second nature to you, but they use the same rules. So we can apply those rules and we're able to convert between bases and figure out the value, right? So knowing all of this, we can actually convert to base 10 pretty easily. In fact, that's kind of what we've already been doing like with the examples with base five the value I was referring to was actually the value in base 10. So like, for example, let's look at another, another, um, another number and a different base, let's say 17 in base eight. And again, before we get into it, just notice that again, this would be valid because it uses digits between zero to seven. Um, of course, it doesn't have to use all of these digits, but if like, say this was 18 base eight, that that's not valid. You can't, you can't write a number like that. It, as I said, it makes it ambiguous. And so it doesn't make sense. So whenever you look at numbers in different bases, just remember that if something doesn't make sense, it's probably because you're using digits you're not supposed to, but Back to this example, we have 17 base 8. And what we know then is just like all the bases we've been working with, the first place is 8 to the 0. The second place is 8 to the first, right? This is just like what we did with base 5 and base 10. So let's look at that then. 
8 to the 0 equals 1. And notice that for all the bases we've worked with, the number in the first place is always, it's always the ones place. And that's, again, that's not a coincidence. It's because of this zero power, which will make any number one, right? So for any base, basically, the first place is going to be the ones place. But you should think of it as the base to the zeroth power. But again, it is the ones place. All right. And then let's look at this one. A one is in the eight to the first place right and so eight to the first we know equals eight all right so knowing that let's think about the values or i guess a better way to refer to it is what this is in base 10. so what we do is well this is this place here where the seven is is the ones place so we use seven times one to get seven and then the 1, we figured out, is in the 8th place. So 1 times 8 equals 8. And now adding that together, we get 8 plus 7. And that's 15, right? And specifically, this is 15 base 10. Because that's what we've done. This whole process is actually converting to base 10, right? When we're looking at the value of the number, and what each digit represents, what we're actually doing is we're finding the base 10 equivalent of 17 base 8. So that's pretty much all you really need to know to convert to base 10. Um, but before we move on, let's, let's look at another example. And you guys can try this one yourself first and then we'll go over it so let's try 224 base 6 what does that equal in base 10 so take a second try it yourself think about the place value and what each digit represents and we'll go over it in three two, one. All right. So just like every other base problem we have done, this is the number to the zeroth place. Zeroth power, sorry. And that's the six to the zeroth place. The two, or sorry, this two is in the six to the first place. And the other two is in the six to the second place right so just like every other base problem we've done it's b to the zero b to the first b squared and again in this case the base is six so six to the zero six to the first six squared and then we can take a look at what this actually equals right six to the zero is one six to the first is six and six squared is 36. So that is the place value for each digit. And so now what we need to do with that place value is multiply it by the digit in that place, right? So 4 times 1 is just 4. 2 times 6, because that's the 6th place, is just 12. And then this other 2 is in the 36th place. So 2 times 36 is 72. And we can add all of this up. And the answer we get is 88 base 10. And so that would be the answer to this base conversion question. It's that simple. And so that's pretty much a summary of how you would convert to base 10, but you might also be asked to convert from base 10 to another base. 
However, that's not something we're going to be covering in this video. You can actually head over to part two for that, where we'll be talking more about bases and specifically how to convert from base 10 to other bases. So hope to see you all there and thanks for watching.